Learn how to handle medical emergencies with our top 10 essential tips, from learning how to pack a first aid kit to making sure you understand how to use the medical equipment that you do have. Stay tuned to Nomad Overlanding. Hello and welcome back everybody. My name is Ben and thank you so much for sticking around for Nomad Overland. This is another one of our top 10 videos. And don't forget to stay to the end of the video because there's gonna be a link at the end on how to actually create a first aid kit. Now that video is about three years old, but I still think it has some good information. So stick around for that. Number one thing that you should do for preparing for medical emergencies is of course, having a good first aid kit. Obviously this is kind of a no brainer, but it's important to say nonetheless. Now, there are certain things that you're gonna to wanna to definitely have in your first aid kit. So bandages of various kinds, scissors, antiseptics, pain relievers, tweezers. It could be maybe a CPR shield, a face shield, possibly, if that is something that you want to use. Um, you might wanna consider personal medications that you might use on a regular basis. And also, of course, with your first aid kit, you wanna check it you know, regularly to make sure that you have enough of everything. Now, there's a couple other things that I would add in the first aid kit. Um, one of them is feminine hygiene products. Now, this is for the obvious reasons that you would use them for, but also, Things like tampons and maxi pads can actually be very, very handy in an emergency situation because if you have a large open gash, you could actually use a maxi pad to cover the wound and tape it up. And because a pad, that type of pad is super absorbing, it's going to absorb some of that blood flow while at the same time you've put pressure on it with the tape. So, in a worst case scenario, you could use something like that. You might also consider using a tampon because it will do the same thing and you can actually put it into a wound and of course it will absorb the blood. Now, sounds kind of weird, but this is something I did learn actually years ago when I was doing a wilderness first aid training. So keep that in mind for your first aid kit. Number two, take a first aid and CPR course. This is something you'd only have to do once every two years because this is, I think it's a two year certification. Um, but it could be if you go with a regular team, it might be something to do as a team. So if you know, if you do go out regularly with the same people, why don't you sign up for first aid and CPR together? And that way you can ensure that everybody in the team has at least that basic information across the board. And once you have that basic information, you could of course jump up to the next level and do additional courses. Complete side note, one of the things that I had wanted to do a few years ago was actually go through the process to become an actual first aid trainer so I could teach other overlanders how to do these things. Unfortunately, that didn't work out, but it's okay. It's still an idea. And I pass that idea on to you because it could be something that you and your team might find interesting and enjoyable and worthwhile to other teams around you. Number three, carry emergency contact information with you. So this is not only people who are not in your team on your trip, you want that contact information, but also perhaps local emergency numbers hospital numbers, and any information for each person that might be relevant. So let's say there's a person that has a penicillin allergy. If that person falls ill and they're unable to communicate, you have that information available for emergency paramedics or hospital staff that you can say this person has a penicillin allergy, therefore that medical team will use something different, okay? So that could be something I think would be a good way to ensure proper information is conveyed to the medical authorities 
should you require them. Number four, know how to use any of your emergency equipment. So you want to make sure that you familiarize yourself not only with putting on band-aids and you know wrapping things things up with gauze and tape, etc. Okay, that's that's a no-brainer. Again, you should you should know how to do that. But what about an EpiPen? Do you have one in your kit? Do you know how to use it? What about a tourniquet or splint? What if you don't have anything that is actually a splint? How would you create one? This is where wilderness first aid can be extremely handy. Uh, legal side note, I believe you have to be at least 100 kilometers away from a hospital or the nearest town in order to actually use wilderness first aid. Therefore, you can't use those things in the city limits. Um, I don't know if that's changed, but when I was doing it years ago, that was one of the, the, the legal requirements of, of wilderness first aid. Anyway, that's, that's a little side note, but um, again, just make sure you know how to use uh, the equipment that you have in your pack. This is gonna sound kind of weird, but learn how to use the scissors that you have in your first aid kit. Um, I know that sounds really, really strange, but scissors, every pair of scissors works slightly differently. And first aid scissors are in fact different from regular shear scissors that you might have in your house. They feel different. Um, just get a, get a sense of how they feel, how they cut through, um, uh, how they cut through gauze, and how do they cut through heavy material? How much work do you have to have in order to do that? It's just, again, it, it's just making sure you know how to use all of these little things in a pinch, definitely come in handy. Number five, carry a satellite phone or a PLB. We talked about these in another video, a personal location beacon, maybe a two-way radio, um, especially in areas where you don't have cellular coverage. Now, yes, satellite phones have come down in price. That is, no, absolutely they have, but not everybody's going to need one of those. So take that with a grain of salt. It depends on the area that you're going to be in. Um, CB communication or ham radio might be more appropriately priced for some of you, uh, but at least have a way of communicating to the outside world uh, that you have a problem. Number six, understand and recognize symptoms. So there may be common symptoms that you'll have when your team is out and about uh, overlanding. For example, what, do you, what would you consider as a symptom of dehydration when it first appears? Not, not when it's full blown, but when it first appears, what is a symptom of dehydration? Well, your lips actually, um, at least from what I understand, dry lips and you start doing this, it becomes habitual. Why? Because your lips are dry. Uh, that's actually one of the key indicators of pre-dehydration. So if you are looking around and you see somebody doing that, it's like, hey, let's have some water and you know, you might get, be getting dehydrated, let's drink something. So look for, look for other, you know, look for those little tells in, in people heat stroke, hypothermia, uh, allergic reactions, all of those can have early recognition symptoms. And if you get them before they become dangerous, before they become escalated events, then you're going to, uh, you're going to protect the team and you're going to protect that individual from having something even worse. Now, depending on where you are, obviously, the local conditions will determine what sort of medical emergencies you might feel are appropriate to be team checking. Blisters is another thing. Learning how to recognize hot spots in a boot, that's a pre-blister, so how do you deal with that? All of those little things can really help the team uh, become better together, you know, you're working together and you're looking out for each other in these little, these little things, really, really helpful in that regard, I think. So uh, paying attention to uh, and understanding uh, symptoms or pre-symptoms of uh, potential medical issues uh, are definitely worthwhile. 
Okay, number seven, maintain a safe environment. So if you're going into a campsite, look around your campsite and check out things that you might consider be potentially hazardous uh, when you are uh, walking around. Number eight, number eight, stay hydrated and well nourished. Dehydration and poor nutrition can lead to a whole host of issues. If you're dehydrated, obviously you're not getting enough water and that's going to lead to a whole host of issues that are really, really unpleasant. And if you've had um, any type of heat sickness or heat stroke, you know that it is a very, very unpleasant thing. Um, headaches, fevers, chills, your body just does not want to move. Um, even at that level of dehydration, drinking water is actually really painful or can be. Also the food that you eat. If you're going out on an overlanding trip and you're eating a lot of junk, like just bad food altogether, and it's not healthy, you're not gonna be able to maintain the level of energy that it's required. It takes effort when you're paying attention to the road and you need to be focused on what's up in front of you. Uh, and to the sides and all around you, you know, and if you don't have energy to do that, mistakes can happen and those mistakes can have real life consequences. So make sure you eat well. Number nine, make sure you have some kind of medical evacuation plan before you get into an emergency situation. So what you want to be doing is when you are out there, look for the nearest, the nearest hospitals, the nearest clinics, uh, maybe the nearest town that you could at least uh, potentially have uh, a medical team uh, available. Even one doctor and one nurse would be better than nothing, right? Uh, making sure that you know how to contact those medical uh, rescue services. This also goes back to letting local individuals know that you and your team are going out to a particular area. So if there is a problem, they know where you are because you've told them where you are. So that also can be a potential lifesaver because it reduces the amount of time that the emergency medical personnel need to find you. Number 10, regularly update your skills and knowledge. So keeping up to date with, mo uh, with medical knowledge, with first aid tips and hints can be really, really helpful. Now, this could of course be, be taking regular first aid and CPR courses on a regular basis, but it could also be perhaps even going to YouTube channels and finding uh, channels that have doctors or licensed individuals to provide information so that you can at least be aware of some of those things. And then maybe create a little playlist for you and your team on different things that you want to be uh, including in your information. Perhaps even this video in your playlist. Who knows? Of course, there's much more to all of this, there's a lot of deep dives that you can go into, which I understand, but stay tuned for this next video because that is on how to make a first aid kit. Thanks everybody. My name is Ben from Nomad Overlanding. Peace.